So let's go ahead and start wrapping everything up, guys. It's going to be the 10 minute warning for the main meeting. Show! Let's go get it. TXV and filter dryer. Well, never mind the calls. I'm going to send you to go put a TXV and a filter dryer right here in Sanger. When you're done with that, then you'll head over to leak detection. Who rode with you yesterday? Okay. So you'll, uh, you'll take him with you today. He can assist you. What else you got? Now we're replacing? Yeah. Okay, let's get Big J on it. What else? And then I got uh, two death cleans uh, back to back for one. All right, guys, uh, the manager, we got two duck cleans for the manager. Barnabé. Let me find out you blame that guy that used to be here and say, well, he's the one with the machine that he broke. All right, what else we got? Sounds like a partial repipe run hot and cold lines over to the hot water heater. Yeah. On Maroa? Okay, so you got that handled? That's what I like to hear. Heal Sarah, her job is to keep track of all the fuel, mileage, fuel, and all the POs, uh, credit cards, you know, making sure everything jives attaching uh, receipts to the jobs, the cost of the job and everything. That's what P.O. Sarah does. And she's pretty good, man. She's real good at finding little things. So, good luck for, if she ever marries, good luck for her husband trying to hide the little things. She'll find it. <laughs> Here's our conference room. It's where all the magic happens. Like, uh, we're going to visit this job site here today. We're going to go out and visit it today. Um, it's a new construction. So it's three systems here and zoned. So I know they were working on the downstairs section right here on this side. Uh, yes, they started it yesterday. So we'll go by over there and take a look, see what they, how far they, they've gotten. Why isn't these girls at her desk? Huh? Why isn't Liz here today? Oh, this is always something. All right. So in here is the dispatch room where we dispatch everybody out. This is Miranda, the head, one of the head dispatchers. And get her and get on this side. Our friend, they hide back here. That's Gigglesworth at the end. She's always laughing for whatever reason. Z? <laughs> Certify. That's my job. That's really consists of the judge stamping stuff saying approve. And of course, this is my humble abode. Not much to see here. Well, let me show you guys something. I want everybody to see this because I like to see this every morning that I step in here. Everybody wants to eat, but are few are willing to hunt. And what that tells me, everybody wants to make money, but very few are willing to put in the hard work to get it. So I like seeing that every morning that I walk in here, uh, you know, inspires me and motivates me. Never mind my stuff in here, I'm a little bit of a hoarder. You know, we're giving away a 2024 Chevy Colorado Trail Boss 4x4 truck. Brand spanking new truck, no strings attached. Um, so we're gonna be raffling off this truck uh, here, in a, uh, here in October. And what it consists of is, you know, uh, for every Yelp review they get, you know, they get a ticket. Uh, for every performance uh, that they, uh, let's say they hit their, their minimum call mark 
for five days straight, they get a ticket. Um, also, if they've been here for 30 days straight, no call-ins, no lates, they get a ticket. Basically, we incentivize their performance. And uh, for whatever reason, production's up high after we came, we came up with this idea. So hopefully this is gonna be our first year and hopefully we can continue to do it for, uh, years to come. So, show, let's go get it. You had started your business way back in the day. How long have you been operating Costless? Costless, I want to say. For the game you put out? Been about 21 years. Obviously, this is Brian going to be pulling over for fuel. And how long yes, running Costless, how long do you feel like it's been a grind versus from the time spent, like actually beginning to see the fruits of your labor? You know, I, I mean, I guess we have a lot more help now than we did back then. So I'm able to, you know, kind of do things like this, like I'm doing now. Um, I'm not required in the field uh, anymore, but I choose to be in the field. Sure. I love, I love, I'm real passionate about what I do. But, but I that's love a rarity tracking. though, for people who are in your position, right? Running a, such a large company, being the owner of such a large company, and you actually choosing to be in a van running calls. Well, and it also, I think it goes back to kind of part of how I am. Um, how can I sit in the office and in an air, with air conditioning and know my guys are out there in these 120 degree attics, uh, you know, 120 degree rooftops, you know, and like today, today's gonna be a 107 degree day by the end of the day. I can't sit in the office and do that. What kind of, as a man, what kind of man would I be? So I gotta be out here grinding just like them. I always tell my guys, I'm no better than them. I'm just a person just like them uh, supporting my family and paying my bills, no different. So I don't see them as employees, but as business partners. Huh. So I like, you know, if they put in the works, then should I, you know, I should too. People think that, you know, being the boss, it's, it's all glamor. You know, it's, 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 it's not. Uh, sometimes, you know, we have to make unpopular decisions. Uh, sometimes we have to make, you know, we have to be the bad guys sometimes, you know. And sometimes I hear like on social media, I hear all the time, you know, guys, you know, bashing bosses. And I get it. And I get it, you know, but just know there's not all bosses are bad. You're absolutely right. You know, um, you know, we're not all bad. There's good bosses out there. And unfortunately, uh, I see these young technicians start off with bad bosses and they, you know, they get a, a chip on their shoulder about bosses, you know. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, where, you know, I've heard stories, you know, I got guys that work for me where their old boss is like, no matter how hard I worked, no matter how hard I tried, it was never good enough, you know? So one, one important thing is, you know, always listening to your employees, you know, what are their needs? You know, what are their wants? You know, and if you've seen in, in uh, this morning's meeting, I always ask, is there anything anybody have to share or anybody have any comments? You know, but we got a pretty good team. I hope you don't come at me like, oh, you got a bad cylinder engine or something. So what's the word with your truck? What's going on? Boss man trucks down. We had a, yesterday we had a breakdown and it looks like one of the turbos are out. So uh, I'm a little anxious because so right now all I, can, all I can do is show up on jobs, inspect the jobs, uh, motivate the guys. But we got tons and tons of no cool calls today, guys. So I'm very uh, anxious to get out in the field and we are going to get out to the field. Uh, I told the mechanic, put it back together. I mean, if I got to go 30 miles an hour uh, to, the, to each job, that's what we got to do. We do what we got to do. We'll, we'll ride it till the wheels fall off. But we're going to go out there and get the jobs done. Shoot! That's crazy, bud. See? Go ahead. This is a real working truck, okay, guys? All day, every day. 
We got the Vito plumbing bag. And they're, they're, uh, we're loading up the, uh, the Vito plumbing, I mean the, the HVAC bag. See how we're drowning, how bad we're drowning in here. Mucho hielo en la yoga, Juanito. All hands on deck, ladies. Hook him and book him, ladies. We're in the van. Where are we going? We're going to go take care of some no cool calls. We're going to go book Pin, Ben, Mr. Tactical, to work. He says I was coming down here to visit me. Well, if you're going to hang with me and visit with me, you got to work. That's what we're going to go do. And down here, we're going to pay him the California minimum wage. <laughs> there's, there's, a, there's a battle out here, and we're late to the party, man. We got to get to shooting. It may be 105 degrees out here, boys, but that don't mean nothing. It's all in the mind. We're going to get this day done. Let's get it, boys. Tomorrow's Friday. All right. Here we're pulling up to our... A no cool call. It's going to be a rooftop unit. Yes, sir. 176. Here we go. Yes, sir. All right. So your unit's located up on the roof? Okay. I should be able to do anything. Let me go up there and assess it. And I'll get right back with you and let you know uh, what we found. While we're rejecting heat, here in America, I don't know what country you're from, Ben, but if we're rejecting heat, that automatically tells my compressor's on. She's pulling high amps, so 10 amps. She's running. We still gotta take care of business, guys. Hello? We got compressor pulling a little bit of high amps because we have dirty condenser coils. Showing me is running a little hot. We found, you know, it's only a 2019 unit and we found we have worn valves on a compressor. So we had to clean the coils. We had to do all this stuff to ensure that we're get the, getting the proper readings. So it leads me to believe the compressor is gonna be the uh, main issue. So we handed it off to our warranties department. That unit wasn't installed by us. And uh, I guess towards the end of the conversation when I went and spoke with the customer, she's had the actual ins installing company out there three times trying to repair it. So she was already aware there was a big issue going on with it. And in fact, since she's, they've installed it, she said I think two weeks after they installed it, it stopped cooling and they've been working on it ever since. So. Chemical on this? No. Nice. Why not? Uh, especially with the tape, you don't want to deteriorate the coil anymore. You've had a good teacher, my friend. One of the best. Well, let's not go that far. But like I was saying. <laughs> See the mud, guys? These clothes haven't been cleaned in years. No, it's barely coming through. Barely. So, we ran a handful of calls, some of which you were able to diagnose from the curb. You know, after you run a lot of service calls and you hear the symptoms a customer provided, 
and I'm able to pull up to the curb and notice the unit that's on top of the roof. I've kind of already got a you know good good idea what it's going to be, and I think I think the last three has been three for three. Yeah. Well, I think um, you know again you start to notice these particular units in this particular age or this particular model have these particular set of problems, right? And you can usually narrow it down. It was pretty good. You narrowed it down pretty good. So. So obviously we got into the van late today, so we weren't able to run, you know, as many calls as you would have liked to run, but you feel like we did pretty good for the day? Um, well, it's six, it's six thirty right now in the afternoon. We're gonna, I think we got into the truck, what, one o'clock? About one thirty, two o'clock. And I think we were still able to hit five calls. I think we got done. Normally, you know, we're, I'm, we're still, as you see, I mean, we're at the mechanic. The van is still not running. Yeah. We have no turbos. Yeah, check engine light is on. There's no power to this thing. Um, so, but you we got to gradually pick up speed, but we're able to, you know, it's all right now, we got a high demand, high volume of calls. So it's all all, uh, all hands on deck. So and I all, told- All in all, we were, the company itself ran close to probably a hundred calls today. I'm pretty sure it's well over that. That's pretty impressive. I mean, that's a lot of calls. To my hand through. And it's a uh, hundred and, I don't know, your truck says 110. Uh, I think we hit ambient temperature out here. I think today was 105, 106. Or there, I think they were even talking about 107. Um, of course, my truck's reading 110 out here in the roadway. And it's already six, six, uh, you know, six o'clock, uh, six o'clock, uh, 630 in the, in the evening. And it's still hot. I mean, you were here last night. 10 o'clock at night and it's still hot you know yeah. the san joaquin valley is definitely <laughs> the equipment here takes a takes a real big beating all, all in all i think we did uh, pretty good um you may or may not may have slowed me down a little bit <laughs> as you've seen you know i think we only got one replacement that you know, R22 unit, 20 plus year old unit. And it's it's a flat unit, it's flat, out of refrigerant pretty much. So, I- Yeah, but I think too, you know, you're in a, you're a rare breed because any guy who owns a company of your size across America is, is I'm gonna venture to say, 99% of them are not doing what you're doing. And what I mean by that is that they're not in the field in a truck running service calls. Whereas, whereas a lot of the guys who are running a company of this size, they're sitting in an office or maybe even just sit at home most of the time, right? So they're kind of reaping the fruit of, you know, running a company of this size. And, and you're, you don't, you're not out here running calls because you have to. You're out here running calls because you want to. I choose to. Yeah. And that's that's just different. You don't well, you don't come across that. I uh, you know I like to say we, we got to lead by example, and I'm going to lead from the front. I'm going to lead the charge. Um, every morning that we normally head out, I'm the you know I'm the first one out. You know I think it encourages the guys. You know it's hot out here, Ben. You experienced it. You've been giving me a hand on these repairs. It's scorching on these roofs. And it's one call after another call after another call. So yeah, I just didn't expect it to be this hot, you know? I mean, I, this is the temperatures that we face in, te in Texas, just more humidity, you know? Uh, I just didn't expect this, uh, but I guess, you know, to be fair, like the heat showed up when we showed up, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you maybe, brought, you maybe brought we the heat. brought it from Texas. I yeah. couldn't help but notice you're a little bit more reddish. Because your skin tone's a little bit more red. I think your ears even caught some sunburn. I got, definitely got some sun today, for sure. <laughs> Had I expected it to be this sunny and this hot, I probably would have wore, uh, you know, a, a straw hat or something like that. So. And probably black's not the yeah, you know, maybe color. I, I actually almost asked you for a shirt this morning, but uh, you'd probably be swimming in one of my shirts. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, all in all, man, I think today went well, and uh, it was cool, kind of being able to see what you do on the day to day. Um, and today's Thursday, so it was cool just kind of hanging out with you. And obviously we had the van issue and stuff, so that kind of slowed us down. But um, yeah, tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning is Friday. Everybody knows, if you know 
Angel and you follow HVAC Boss on social media, everybody knows on Friday mornings they do something very special at their uh, at their shop. And this every Friday morning. It's not a it's not a once a month or once a quarter or once a year. It's every week. And so uh, that's where Angel basically brings in barbecue and breakfast and you know all kinds of just all the fixins. They play games. They play basketball, throw footballs around, and water balloon fights. I think tomorrow we're doing water balloon fights. Yeah, and you're the target, I hear. You can bring it, dude. Bring it. <laughs> so we are pulling up to a call to help a bunch of other guys. There's five calls here at this uh, complex. Uh, I just, they, they got enough guys here. It was kind of a rendezvous point for some of the HVAC techs. Um, I just want to come by. I'm pretty sure they're probably wrapping it up. But I just want to come by and show my support that I'm here, and I, I don't want. I like to be the last one in, so I can't beat these guys back to the shop. So we're just gonna stop in and make sure everything's good, so we can uh, head on in. was in very poor shape. She had a chase set up that what used to be a dunk there with, uh, was here with a small return uh, with a cavity chase of 12 by 24. So we came in here, put in new flex ducking, cut in new 14 by six uh, cans throughout the entire home and upsize the return to an 18 inch. So we can, we we're able to upsize to a 310 unit that fits more her home while also uh, allowing the additional CFMs to be able to circulate the home a lot better um, by strategically placing them throughout the home. So. Uh, she will be able to notice a 90 day difference. And that's a wrap, boys. Shoo!